Hi, Erwan for Motion VFX. In this video, we will see how fast it is to create a 3D transition inside the second shot. Let's see the final result. Back in Final Cut Pro with my 4K footage, I will need to extract the motion of the camera and analyze the 3D scene. To do that, I will use mTracker 3D. mTracker 3D can be found inside the filters library. You just have to drag and drop it on your clip. A track button will appear inside the viewer to launch the analysis. You can also find this track button in the inspector. I will click on it. I will accelerate the analysis, but for information, the analysis will take two minutes. As soon as the analysis is done, a blue button copy track will be available in the inspector. I will click on it to copy all the 3D data from mTracker 3D. I will need to add my second shot. To do so, I can't use directly my footage. I will use dedicated titles. When you install mTracker 3D, you will have the plugin, but also a lot of useful tools inside the titles. Tools like text element, drop zone, particles, pointers, and USDZ 3D models. All these elements work with the 3D data from mTracker 3D. For this project, I will use a basic drop zone. I will drag it over my clip and adjust the duration. By default, you can see that the drop zone is not affected by mTracker 3D. I will need to paste all the 3D data into this drop zone. So I will click on the Paste Track blue button. A pop-up window indicates me that the tracking data have been saved successfully. If I skim the project, we can see that the drop zone is affected by the camera motion now. By default, there is an automatic position added. We can change it by clicking on the target icon. If you want to get rid of the ints display in the lower part of the viewer, you just have to deactivate the show ints parameter inside the inspector. As you can see, my 3D axis is affected by the 3D environment of the scene. Most of the time, it is very useful as we want a complete 3D integration. But in this case, we want that the drop zone face the camera to get a nice smooth transition. To ignore the 3D environment, you just have to press the shift key and you will see that the 3D axis will be affected only by the Z depth. Let's place the axis here and check if the tracking is good. Perfect. As you can see, at one point the camera goes through the drop zone. So I will need to adjust the size of the drop zone. In the inspector, you will have access to many parameters for the drop zone, like the position, the rotation and the scale, but also various parameters for the look of the drop zone, like the blading mode, the noise, the blur and the colorization. First, I will reduce the size. I will go to the frame where I want to switch to the second shot. I will add a marker by pressing the M key. Then I will adjust the position to center the drop zone with the camera. You can use the Show Horizon feature in the View menu to help you to get some reference. I will slightly adjust the rotation also. Let's have a look. Okay, it seems good. Let's add the second shot to see the result. I will click inside the drop zone icon in the inspector. I will select the first frame of the clip and click on apply. It's working fine, the only problem is that we are not switching to the second shot as the camera is still moving to the drop zone. So I will drag and drop the second shot over my two elements. I will trim the in point to my marker position.
To be sure to get a smooth transition between the two shots, I will decrease the opacity of the second shot. Then I will select my drop zone layer and adjust the X and Y position to get a perfect match. It seems OK, so I can push back the opacity to 100%. OK, so now let's see how to adjust the timing of the drop zone layer. As a title effect, it's not possible to directly trim the in and out point, as it will adjust automatically the animation keyframe. I will undo it by pressing Command Z. To be able to change the in and out point, you just have to create a cop and clip of the drop zone by right clicking. I will name it Adjusting Drop Zone. Now I can change the in and out point without modifying the animation. I would like also to add a transition in to the drop zone. To do so, I will use animations from MBAVR Titles Pack available on the Motion BFX website. They are very easy to use as they are working like adjustment layers. As you can see, there are many complex animations available. I will add the Stripes In animation. As it is working like adjustment layer, the effect is applied to all the layers below the effect. So I need to limit the effect to the adjusting drop zone carbon clip. To do so, you just have to select both elements, carbon clip and the effect, then create a carbon clip of these two elements. And the problem is solved. The only issue is that Final Cut Pro doesn't manage motion blur. And you can see that the borders are very sharp. To mimic a fake motion blur effect, I will go inside the cup and clip. I will duplicate the adjusting drop zone layer. And I will apply a zoom blur effect on the one below. I will decrease the amount parameter as I want a light effect. I will add two keyframes to animate the amount of blur as I don't want blur during the transition. To conclude with this project, I will select all the elements and group them with a new compound clip. I will name it CC for color correction. In the filters library, I will select MFIM look and try several presets. I will add the bedim preset and I will adjust some parameters like the grain, the lens blur and the lot. Then I just have to export it. Let's check the result. To get more tutorials on M-Tracker 3D, don't forget to subscribe to the Motion VFX YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Ciao ciao. Bye bye.